Hello friends, in the last video we studied about the two sector economy. Today we are going to study the circular flow of sector in a three sector economy. Now if you have not already watched the previous video then I would want you to go and first see that video because this video will only make sense if you understand how a two sector economy functions. In this video we are going to start introducing the government in our economy and the role of the government is to manipulate both the consumers as well as the producers by their taxation and subsidy systems and that is exactly what we are going to learn today so let's get started in the last video we studied that it is the households who provide the factors of production to the firms and the firms are the people who provide factor payments to the households with the factors of production the firms produce output and that output is being sold to the households which you would see to it that the households produce with the same factor payment money now you see the kind of income that was generated in the economy was the consumption income and the savings that the household were doing the consumption income being the income of the firms and the expenditures that used to be there in the economy was the consumption expenditures that the households were doing and the investment expenditure that the firms were doing and we said whenever the consumption expenditure plus investment expenditure equaled the consumption income plus the savings we said the economy is in equilibrium and our equilibrium condition was that savings should be equivalent to investment when we introduce the government in a circular flow of income the government actually has two jobs one is to collect taxes the other is to do government expenditure in the form of subsidies and transfer payments so what does the government do the government taxes both the households as well as the firms the government pays subsidies to the firms and pays transfer payments to the households now you might ask me okay what is the difference between a subsidy and a transfer payment now a transfer payment is a form of subsidy only the only difference is that difference is that that when the money directly goes in the hands of the households that is in the hands of the individual rather than going to the firms to the you know household we call it as a transfer payment so for example you see you get a subsidy on say the gas cylinders that you use now you see the gas cylinder money doesn't really come into your own account rather it is given to say bharat gas or hindustan gas or whichever you know gas supplier you are using and then the gas supplier deducts the money from the original price and gives it at a lower rate to you so what happens in a three sector economy here now in a three sector economy now the expenditure has increased the total economic expenditure in this economy now will be obviously the consumption expenditure that the households were doing for consumption the investment expenditure that the firms were doing for investments plus now there is an additional expenditure that would be added which is the government expenditure in the forms of taxes and subsidies right and what would be the incomes in this society then you see the income would be the consumption income that is obviously all the consumption expenditure that the households are doing are the incomes for the firms plus there would be savings that the households are doing which is the income for the households but then there would be taxes the tax collection you would see to it that the government is doing is going to be the income for the government so you see the income in the society as well as the expenditure in the society has increased because of the government again if you do this mathematically you would notice that the cc would get cut off and what you will be left with is i plus g is equal to s plus t now if you take all the government variables on one side you would have g minus t is equal to s minus i this particular equality is telling something very important to us it tells us that in any given situation if the government expenditure increases or exceeds the income that is the tax collection that the government is doing then you would see to it that the government is running on a deficit budget that is it that is its expenditures are more than the income that it earns in such cases you would see to it that the only source from which the government can actually increase its income is to the savings of the households and that is why whenever the government expenditure increases in any given period in the next period you would see to it to fill in that deficit the government would actually take the savings of the people in the with the means of taxation and you see the savings which should have been converted into investment will now not get converted into investment 
So you can clearly see that the investments in the society, that is the people who were a willing to do the business and create an output in the society will now not be willing to create output in the society just because the government expenditure increased, because of which the savings in the economy decreased, because the government started to tax more. And because of which you see the savings did not get converted into investment and the private sector slowly and steadily starts to crowd out. This is what we call as the crowding out effect. Hence, it is advised according to traditional economists that the government expenditure should never exceed its income. So this is something very interesting that the three sector economy teaches us. In the next video, we learn about the four sector economy and see how four sector economy is relevant to us. In the modern age, we are the kind of people who trade with different countries and foreign economies play a huge role in our life and that is exactly what we are going to see in the next video. Until then, adios, hasta la vista.